In this video, I'd like to answer the age-old question, does more money buy happiness? If you don't know me, hi, I'm Dr. Anna Yudin. I'm a doctor of clinical psychology and an author. I post one to two times a week lately, and so if you want to see more videos on real-life applications of psychology, make sure to hit the bell notification button so that you can be notified about new videos. And with that out of the way, let's get straight into it. So interestingly, when I went to the research on this topic, I found out that there were only a handful of studies looking into the correlation between happiness and money, which is pretty atypical compared to other topics that I've done on this channel. I would say for the vast majority of topics that I've covered, there are dozens upon dozens, if not hundreds of articles on the topic that I'm referencing. So considering how little research there is on this topic and the fact that I'm sure a lot of you have really valuable things to input on this topic, I'd love it if you could give your answer in the comments. Do you think that more money is correlated with more happiness, especially before we actually get into the research, since I know once we get into it, that'll probably change your perspective. So in your experience, does money buy happiness? Is there a cap at which it no longer affects happiness? So in 2010, there was a study by Kahneman and Deaton, which said that more money is correlated with more happiness up until a cap of $75,000, where it plateaus and more money doesn't equal more happiness. And for many years, I remember even when I was an undergrad, this was the study being spread all over. You universities, the internet, etc. For the longest time, the explanation was that if you have just enough to cover your basic necessities, if you're not worrying about basic things like food and shelter and so forth, then you are going to be happier than if you are struggling to cover those basic expenses. But past that point, past the point where you're not trying to just get your basic needs met, money doesn't actually cause happiness. And of course, this is tricky to talk about because what we're discussing is correlational research, and so there was never any causational inference made at all. So of course, many people speculate that there might be a causal relationship there. Now, it's worth noting that what was $75,000 in 2010 is now worth $105,505. And the average salary in the US in 2023 was $59,428, which is significantly below not just the 105K, but also the 75K. Due to inflation, 75K is worth a lot less today than it was in 2010. And I think we've all noticed lately that the cost of things like groceries or renting a home or buying a home has gone up significantly. All of this to mean that the vast majority of Americans are living well below the cutoff of what even in 2010 was considered comfortable living that was correlated with greater happiness. Thing is, more recent studies have actually debunked that original study, have called into question the idea that there is a cap at which more money doesn't correlate to higher happiness. So in 2015, there was a study by Khrushchev and Dunn which sampled 12,292 Americans. And this study showed the greater income was associated with lower sadness, but not greater happiness. Again, although this study, like the last one, was just correlational, not causational, we can't assume that it's because of this. It did suggest that removing the everyday stresses brought up by financial instability helps reduce painful feelings, but that once you have a lot of money, it's not necessarily going to make you a happier person. The idea is that that 2010 original study actually measured unhappiness, not happiness. You might be thinking, huh, isn't happiness just the opposite of unhappiness? Aren't they along the same spectrum? Some researchers theorize that that might not be the case, that being less sad doesn't actually mean you're more happy and that happiness and sadness are separate but not opposite constructs. Now here's where it gets interesting. In 2021, there was a study by Killingsworth which showed that there is no plateau at which income stops predicting happiness. Happiness just continues to grow as income does. This study looked at two different types of well-being, evaluative and experienced. Evaluative is a person's day-to-day -day evaluation of their life and experienced is their actual level of well-being in day-to-day -day life. So as you can see in this graph, well-being keeps growing as a person's income goes up, including after the 75k original mark, and after today's equivalent, after considering inflation, of 105k. And this graph shows how greater income both increases positive feelings and decreases negative feelings. The findings of the study were true even after controlling for demographic variables like age, gender, marriage, and education level. There was one exception. There was a minority of people that even after they made significantly over $100,000, they were still miserable. So this is partial support for the older notion that past a certain point, more money doesn't make you happier. And the idea that once you have your basics in order, there are some people whose unhappiness 
unhappiness won't be solved by money because money is not ultimately what is causing their unhappiness. Also, let's put into perspective how much happier we're actually talking. A fourfold difference in income has about the same effect on happiness as the effect of a weekend. And it's about a third as large of an effect as having a headache. So if you're hearing this research and you're thinking, oh man, I'd be happy all the time if I were rich, is not that much happier as you would expect. You know, it, it's not like making four times as much money makes you four times as happy. So why did this recent study debunk older studies? What's with the discrepancy between these studies? Earlier studies that did find a plateau used binary measures of well-being, whereas this one used a continuous scale. This one also had repeated measurement of happiness to detect variation. So in other words, it didn't just track people's happiness on a one-time thing. It did it every single day over a period of time to sort of get a baseline of their happiness. So what are the theories about this correlation? Why is greater income associated with greater happiness? Before I get into that, let me tell you about the connection course. I have a new relationship skills course out called The Connection Course. It contains over four hours or 252 minutes of 15 lectures, as well as 20 pages of handouts. We're talking journaling prompts, exercises, homework assignments, and a community forum where you can ask other students and myself questions about the course or helping apply some of the exercises if you're struggling with them. This course goes into all the foundational skills of healthy relationship that I think are important for people to have, like communication skills, understanding, what healthy relationships are, what are the ingredients of healthy love, emotion regulation, how to keep your relationship positive, attachment style boundaries, conflict management, how to recognize unhealthy relationships, how to end unhealthy relationships, self-assessments, and more. So if this sounds like something that would be helpful to you, I'm going to include a link to it at the very top of the description box of this video. Check it out, it is on Learn Worlds and I have pay over time options as well. Back to the correlation between money and happiness. What are the theories about this correlation, why it exists? One theory, is that people spend their money in ways that reduce their suffering and increase their enjoyment. For instance, if you're able to afford good health care, that reduces your suffering both medically and emotionally. If you go on a nice vacation, that increases your enjoyment, your sense of pleasure. Another theory is that increased income gives a person greater control over their life. People's sense of control accounted for 74% of the association between income and experienced well-being. In other words, there's definitely evidence to suggest that more money gives a person more agency over their own life. If a person doesn't feel trapped in a life that they don't want, they're much likely to be happier than someone who does feel trapped because of money. Now, there is also this theory that greater income reduces a person's time poverty. Time poverty refers to this idea of constantly being hustling, never having enough time to do the things that you want to do in day-to-day -day life. And the theory was that people who are well off financially have less time poverty, meaning they have more time to do other things that they want. But interestingly, this theory was actually not supported by the study. The study showed that time poverty actually increased along with income. And personally, this makes sense to me. I'm a firm believer in Parkinson's law, which is the idea that the more things you have to do in your life, time will kind of expand to make room for all of them. And I think the reverse is also true. When you have fewer things on your plate, they take up more of your time. Basically, time constricts or expands based on how many tasks you have. So for instance, even though I'm fully self-employed, I still work nine to five or sometimes eight to five, eight to six, sometimes 12 hour days as well. Even though I have far fewer duties than I did when I was in grad school and I had, you know, classes, applications and interviews, practicum, internship, dissertation, you know, this YouTube channel, all of it. It was a lot more tasks. And yet now that I have fewer, I still somehow spend just as long on all of them. So it doesn't seem like money solves time poverty. How much a person values money was also shown to play a role here. So low earners were happier if they thought money was unimportant and high earners were happier if they thought money was important. This makes sense. You know, if you value a thing and you don't have that thing, that's going to make you sad. And if you value a thing and you have it, then that's going to make you happy. What a person thinks money means about their success also played a role. So people who thought money is associated with success had a steeper association between income and well-being. In other words, those who thought money is associated with success and had little of it felt worse about themselves, and those who thought money was associated with success and had a lot of it felt better. So in summary, recent research calls into question the old belief that money only buys enough happiness to account for your basic expenses, and that past a certain point, there's a cap to how much money can make you happy. It may be that money reduces feelings of unhappiness caused by lack of happiness, but it also seems to be correlated with greater happiness with no plateau. And again, all of this research is correlational, so we can't even really infer causality, but we can make a guess. All of this could be because money decreases suffering and increases enjoyment, increases a person's sense of control over their own life trajectory. 
money doesn't actually reduce time poverty like we believed. It doesn't give you more time to enjoy your life. How you feel about money is likely to affect how happy or unhappy you are with your own financial status. And the good news is if you're not financially well off, quadrupling your income would only make as much of a dent in your happiness as a weekend. And there's still rich people who more money doesn't make happier because it doesn't seem like that's the cause. What's your theory on all this? I know this is kind of a depressing video if you're feeling the weight of the current economy right now, but if you do want to hear about the relationship between money mindset and accumulating more wealth, you might want to check out this video that I made recently. I hope this was interesting. If it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, comment what your thoughts are, and I'll see you soon.